Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I had a question about N1 that I posted to my Discord and also in the comments to a previous video Meow Meow DK had basically the same suggestion which is what exactly happens when you take the N1 rocket, the Soviet moon rocket from the 1960s and somewhat from the 70s and replace its engines which are kerosene and oxygen with methane and oxygen engines, or Raptor engines, as I will decide to use, uh, will that improve the performance of N1 at all? The balance here is that, well, the Raptor engines, the methane oxygen engines, have better performance, have better efficiency. However, the methane is not as dense as the kerosene. So if we use the same volume, we have a subcooled RG1, which is the kerosene, and then cooled uh, locks. I don't know why they've added so many variations to uh, kerosene and oxygen for realism overhaul, but now it's very particular. Uh, we are going to just use methane and oxygen as uh, Pekka has configured the Raptor engines and see if that's going to do anything better than this particular mix of propellants which are on all the stages. So we've got three stages here for N1 and first we'll test out its performance with the kerosene and oxygen as it is here and the reason we have to test that out is because well it's sort of complicated the, the regular payload for N1 is sort of complicated and its fairings are huge so I've simplified the payload so that we get a straight 90 ton payload here which I think it can do 95 tons maybe I'll set it to 95 tons and I recall that being the rated payload of N1 so we'll make sure that I can do 95 tons to orbit from Baikonur and then we will see what the methane version has. Now we have these really big fairings to match the large fairings that were on N1. That was one thing holding N1 back among many other things. Uh, but yeah, the fairings combined here are 10 tons. That's actually lighter than what they were uh, with the actual stack. And if we take a look at the actual stack, we've got two fairings that are 3.76 uh, tons, and then two other fairings that are the same. Uh, I think Raider Nick just split the, split the total fairing mass into four bits. And so we have, what, 15 tons worth of fairing there. So we're carrying less fairing, and then there's also the launch escape system, which is 7.6 tons. So we're carrying a whole lot less of extra mass on top, and that's why we have to test it. So the launch mass is 2,700 tons. I'm going to take it outside and I'm just going to keep it really simple. I'll deploy the grid fins. We have grid fins on here. They're sort of in a different place than usual, but we do have grid fins here. And I'll just manually control it. I'm not going to hot stage just to keep things simple. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. And actually, I think I will hot stage after all because the Raptor's hot stage on Super Heavy, well, on Starship anyway, so we'll have consistency like that. But I'll have to keep an eye out for the fuel consumption as a way of telling when to hot stage. Okay, and trajectory's gonna be interesting because we've got two very powerful stages up front and then a six minute stage after that. This is sort of a little bit different from Saturn V where it's got a uh, powerful stage first and then a six minute stage in the middle that's the the S2 stage and then the S4B which uh, takes uh, has a very low thrust weight ratio but doesn't get used up so it's a complicated balance there that's actually longer in time but this is sort of finicky gear we're probably gonna have to toss it up a little bit and let it come down but all right ignition launch. Well, the sound ain't great right now. Waterfall's a bit inconsistent sometimes. Well, it's got a really high thrust weight ratio here because they were expecting a lot of the engines to die. 
Hopefully the next stage won't have this sort of sound to it. I don't know what's going on. Okay, ignition. And separation. Second stage. First stage was 30 NK-15s. This is 8 NK-15Vs, vacuum versions. And I'm just going with the versions that were actually launched, not upgraded versions or anything like that. Oh, I have it throttled down still. Whoops. Oh, I missed this hot staging. Okay, separation. I missed the hot staging a little bit, but not critical. One reason the fairings burden the whole thing so much is because it carries them all the way to orbit. This is not a flaw. This is how it was. Uh, I think I tossed it a little bit too high up. We're a little bit short. All right, let me try one more time. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Well, trying to get this thing's max payload to orbit's gonna be a bit tight. Does not seem easy. Okay, here we go. Ignition. Separation. Throttle up. Well, I've gotten a bit high here. But maybe that's for the best. I don't have to try and tilt up a whole lot or anything. Okay, oh, I've got my hot staging. Seems like it'll be enough like this. But it's, it is awful high. Alright, coming to the end of it, we... Maybe a bit short, maybe alright because of our great height here. Well, just about. Alright, so we made orbit, and that's 95 tons. Uh, went really high. I Maybe if I did a few more times I could get a little bit more, but I'll try to more or less match this with the methane. So, yeah, 95 tons is what we brought up. And I gotta separate the fairings, since I'm gonna revert anyway. Let's try and put some raptors on. The thing about putting raptors on is we don't have the same count that we... Oops, that, that was already all of the engines there. Uh, we don't have the same count of engines that we do with the NK engines. Well, this stage doesn't need two of them. It just needs one, really. And even that's probably overdoing it. Because it had four small, smaller engines, not the, NK, uh, not the NK-15s or 15 Vs, but that's about the same Delta V. Maybe a little bit less. I'll attach it to oh, that node and then just tweak it. Well, see, our hot staging thing is not great right now. Um, yes, that's how we'll do it. Okay. Now this had eight engines. Still Raptor vacuums. Rear Nick is gonna hate this. Probably doesn't need four. That's definitely overdoing it. Sort of matches the spirit of the or the original version, though. Uh, well, they're sort of clear. 
So somewhat ironically, we'll have fewer of the engines down here. Let's say we have six gimbals. Oh, it does occur to me, well, uh, hopefully we've got some gimbling on the Raptor vacuum. Uh, that's important. So, well, you see the problem here. Um, we're not getting a whole lot of extra delta V because of the low density of the methane now. We could have super cooled methane or something like that. We've just got sort of regularly cooled methane. But maybe the fact that the stage time is not not as bad. It doesn't take as long. Maybe I can extend this a little bit to take advantage of that. Let's say 105 tons and see if I can manage it. But the initial thrust weight ratio isn't so high. The second stage thrust thrust weight ratio is quite a bit higher. No, oh, now it's only 9,271, but that's because of the hot staging. Okay, N1 Raptor edition. Let's see. Only 12 engines on the first stage now. Very un N1. And it's only 2,142 tons compared to 2,700 for the actual N1. All right then, 105 tons, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Here we go. But basically I'm thinking it's not a slam dunk. And you can see from the burn times that the lack of density with the methane sort of hurts this as long as we're keeping the tanks all the same size. Well, the same general size. Let's not get into particulars about the fact that we would have to resize the, the kerosene tank technically. It's not really, really the same, but it's the same total volume, not the same volume for the individual propellants. Okay, ignition, and separation. Okay, I don't think the gambling's good enough. Or maybe it's not working right. Let me replace these. I think we need the gimbal fix. Okay, well, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to put some powerful RCS on it. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. All right, should be through max Q. Okay, ignition and separation. Well, seems controlled now. All right. Oh, not in hot staging mode there. Okay, ignition, separation. Just the one vacuum engine here. So I did fill up the same volume. No change there. This is now a mere three minute stage. Well, turns out not quite. Not quite there. I don't feel it was too bad a trajectory, and of course with the other rocket, it was actually worse because we tossed it pretty high. So, yeah, maybe a little less than 105 tons. The basic gist of this is that, well, it's not really that big difference, and that's because of the density of the methane. I don't think it's going to be too much different. Uh, 103, let's say. I think a little bit of optimization and everything should be good. Alright, let's try it. 103. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, launch. Mind you, we're still not carrying the heavier fairings, not to mention the launch escape system. 
Okay, hot stage separation. All right, ignition. And there goes the second stage. Pretty tight still. All right. Well, the uh, oops. All right, I think we've used all of it. Uh, we did make it to orbit with the 103 tons. Not anything left to spare here. Uh, there is residuals. But yeah, so it's not beating, you know, Saturn V like this. But its launch mass is way less than Saturn V. And way less than N1 itself. And that's sort of the problem. I mean, the great efficiency of the methane engines, of the Raptor engines in particular, gets hurt when the tanks can only be filled to the point where they're 2,139 tons, uh, whereas the N1 with kerosene is 2,700 tons. So it'll be more optimal if we have larger stages. That's obvious, especially with this second stage, which really doesn't have that much burn time. Uh, could definitely go for longer. Even the third stage is suboptimal. It should get more delta V than that. Uh, and we could do with a little bit less thrust to weight ratio, but I can't really have less than one Raptor. So yeah, it would be a differently shaped rocket and would no longer be N1. Uh, we could make that rocket, but this is just an uh, interesting comparison because I didn't know how it'd shape up because of the fact that we are using the same volume and methane is not as dense and or actually the combination of the propellants is not as dense because I think the, the there's more oxygen involved in kerosene and oxygen than there is in methane and oxygen. So that also makes the ratio makes it also less dense overall. So yeah, that is the situation. 103 tons versus 95 tons is basically what I'm looking at. So it's a little bit better, but it's not a whole lot better unless you're trying to optimize for start mass somehow. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.